So welcome back, uh, colleagues, uh, for uh, this important uh, debate, uh, debate on a long term uh, vision for uh, rural uh, rural areas. I want to uh, particularly uh, welcome uh, Commissioner uh, Suiza. Uh, I'm going to add former mayor of Dubrovnik, uh, vice president of the Commission for Democracy uh, and Demography. Uh, in addition, uh, Commissioner Wojciechowski, uh, Commissioner for uh, Agriculture, uh, on my own behalf and on behalf of the entire COR membership and team to thank you both for accepting uh, this invitation and indeed for the ongoing close uh, cooperation uh, between us. Uh, I also want to particularly welcome uh, Madam Isabel Carvalhais, uh, member of the Parliament's uh, Committee on Agriculture and Rural Development and uh, Rapporteur uh, on the long-term uh, vision. To thank you all for taking time from what I'm sure are very, very busy uh, schedules to be with us for uh, this important uh, debate. I'd now like to commence the debate uh, with uh, a video. So colleagues, can I ask you to please uh, start launch uh, the video? Aprovechar al máximo los recursos del territorio, que son muchos. Niños con los que nosotros empezamos a trabajar al principio ahora ya son adultos y son adultos que lideran ellos programas, iniciativas, experiencias de emprendimiento. Si ellos quieren quedar allí y tienen recursos, es que hay que buscar la forma de que se queden en su entorno. Que los servicios los tiene que haber igualmente, ¿no? seamos pocos o muchos. La formación era fundamental para estar en el campo mejor y también para poder elegir estar o no en el campo. Las TICs digamos que son el futuro y el teletrabajo es una oportunidad enorme en las zonas rurales. No solo la conectividad como conocemos de banda ancha o fibra óptica, sino en zonas de alta montaña de mi valle todavía existe dificultad en cuanto a la electricidad o a la cobertura de teléfono. Pienso que debería existir una ventanilla única que gestionase pues, todos los papeleos que conlleva el, el emprender en el, en el medio rural. Pues estuvimos prácticamente tres años desarrollando la idea pues, por trámites burocráticos. Se debe de fomentar de alguna manera el que los profesionales no solamente trabajen en los grandes hospitales. Me gustaría enfatizar en que la gente de las zonas rurales que queremos vivir en nuestras zonas se nos dé las oportunidades. Uh, dear Vice President, uh, dear uh, Commissioner, I'd very much like to start this debate with two key words, rural pact. From Brussels legislators, to policy practitioners on the ground from the European Commissioner, Commission to the tiniest municipal council. We all agree we need to bring EU national, regional and local actors together with a real pact that sets objectives and tools to help rural areas out of this crisis and to open a new phase of prosperity for the European countryside. This is not a bureaucratic request, but an evidence-based demand. In our latest uh, regional and local barometer, published last October, we raised awareness about the impact of the current crisis on rural areas. We stress that the increasing gaps that penalize rural communities demand a coordinated action. In this context, the EU long-term vision for 
uh, rural areas and the relevant action plan proposed by the European Commission include important provisions and offer a valuable strategic framework to plan a sustainable future for our rural communities. We have increased clarity on rules, adequate funding coming from both the EU regular budget and next generation EU, and a stronger public awareness about the many challenges for rural areas more visible during the pandemic. But what we really miss, which might endanger our success, is a real political willingness to work in partnership. Indeed, both the reformed Common Agricultural Policy and the Recovery and Resilience Facility risk being overly centralised. Neglecting the partnership principle will make them ineffective. The pact we need is therefore a political one in order to avoid taking a territorial blind approach to rural revi revival and miss a once in a lifetime opportunity offered by an unprecedented European investment plan. Our rural areas are dealing with dramatic demographic challenges, digital gaps, low income levels, limited economic diversification, limited access to services, weaker connectivity and specific climate change implications. Our cooperation will be crucial to address these challenges. Our committee stands ready to promote rural packs on a ground in and for our communities. Uh, dear Vice President uh, Suiza, as I said, uh, it's a pleasure uh, that you're joining with us uh, today. Uh, the floor is now yours. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon to everybody, dear members of the Committee of the Region. I'm glad to have this exchange with you today on the Commission's long-term vision for rural areas and to be here with my colleague, Commissioner Wojciechowski, head of your vote on this report. I have read your opinion with great interest. And yesterday I had the pleasure to meet with your rapporteur to discuss in detail various elements of the report that you are adopting today. I am delighted to see that you largely share the Commission's analysis of the challenges that rural areas currently face. I think about depopulation, lack of access to services, lack of skills and infrastructure, which you mentioned. And as European Commission Vice President for Democracy and Demography, I think about the need for rural stakeholders to feel included in policy making process. This is part of making our democracy fit for the future and making sure we leave no one and nowhere behind. I welcome your call to make rural areas part of the Conference on the Future of Europe. This communication has been drafted on the basis of a wide public consultation that has very much guided our work on this vision. But the conference itself is mindful of rural concerns. Many recommendations that have already been adopted point in the direction of rural areas, while some build directly on this long-term vision. Indeed, we have ensured that an appropriate proportion of the randomly selected citizens participating in the European panels actually come from rural areas. Last weekend, we had the third plenary session of the conference during which we discussed these specific recommendations. I appreciate the commitment of your representatives and of local and regional authorities in this process. You are the backbone shaping the European Union of the future. And let me be clear, any change in order to be sustainable must be embraced at the local level because that is the one that is the closest to our citizens. And our ambition with the long-term vision is to generate a new momentum for rural areas with a set of tools that should help rural regions become more prosperous connected, sustainable, and attractive. The Committee of the Regions is the first institution to adopt its formal opinion on this long-term vision. Your recommendations will provide us with guidance for the implementation phase of this vision. The publication of the communication was indeed just a starting point, a roadmap for the next 40 years. To be successful on this road, we need to work together. 
my impression after reading your report is that we are very much aligned when it comes to identifying opportunities such as the vital role rural areas play in the green transition you mentioned the potential of digitalization and yes there are some positive prospects of changes brought about by the pandemic i very much welcome your recommendations on urban rural linkages the need for a fair rural urban balance and recognizing mutual benefits and the beneficial character of rural investment for for urban residents. But we must also bear in mind that apart from the green and digital transitions, there is another almost silent transition that is transforming our continent, the demographic transition. And if you do not factor this in, our policies cannot be as effective as we wish them to be. I would like to touch upon four key points from the vision on which cooperation with you European Committee of the Regions will be, the, will be of vital importance. These are the action plan that is underpinning this vision. Secondly, the Rural Pact. The third is the Rural Proofing. And finally, the Handbook for the Better Use of European Funds. The rationale behind the action plan is that this is not a vision for some far away future, but that we have a roadmap to start building this future together as of right now. We share your sense of urgency to act for rural areas. And when we started this rural vision process 18 months ago, Commissioner Wojciechowski, Commissioner Ferreira and I invited member states, we invited member states to take into account this rural vision process in the programming of European funds. We have just renewed this request in a letter to all member states. Commission services are currently deeply engaged in assessing the operational programs and strategic plans submitted by member states and regions. Our services will do their best to ensure the needs of rural areas are addressed through adequate interventions. I know that my colleague, that my colleague Commissioner Wojciechowski, will tell you more about that. We have already started implementing a number of points from the action plan. Our intention is by mid-2023 next year to take stock of what actions have been carried out and programmed in support schemes for rural areas in the programming period between 2021 and 2027. In parallel, we have taken concrete steps to launch the creation of EU Rural Observatory to operationalize rural proofing and to structure ideas for the rural revitalization platform. Most of the flagships are underway, bringing all different commission departments and policies on board. And dear members, I want to conclude with a, with a few words on the Rural Pact, because I know it is very much in your focus. It is clear that we cannot achieve this vision alone. That is why we have proposed the Rural Pact. All authorities and stakeholders who support the shared goals of the vision and want to work towards its achievement should co-shape it together with us. This should help realize the rural vision in synergy with different policies and local action in rural communities. Just a few weeks ago, on the 20th of December last year, we launched the Rural Pact by inviting all relevant institutions, authorities and stakeholders to join the Rural Pact community and to develop this pact working towards the high level rural pack conference that we want to hold this year in june i would like to thank you for your commitment to work with us on this pact together we can successfully organize the commitments at all levels of governments of governance and in order to achieve the shared goals of this vision to conclude I want to use this opportunity to go beyond rural vision and to sincerely thank you for your broad engagement, your broad engagement in the Conference on the Future of Europe and the interesting proposals made in your interim report published on uh, 14th of December. I look forward to the final results of your work that I understand will be presented in Marseille in a few weeks, where I play, uh, where I I'm going or I'm planning to join you again. Thank you. And I understand that now my colleague and 
co-author of this vision, Commissioner Wojciechowski, will take the floor. Thank you and all the best. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Commissioner, for those positive uh, and uh, inspiring words. And as you said, uh, we're also joined and I'm delighted to welcome Commissioner Wojciechowski. And I hope I've got your pronunciation right, um, uh, Commissioner. Uh, it's now my pleasure uh, to give you the floor. Commissioner Wojciechowski, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you for inviting me to join you today. Uh, I would like to begin by congratulating your, you on your excellent work, in particular Mr. Moreno Bonilla and the co-reporters. Uh, I look forward to, to today's adoption of the opinion on the long-term vision for rural areas, which represents uh, the fruit of your work and uh, marks another milestone uh, in our progress. Uh, I'm also looking forward to today's discussion. Uh, we launched the, the vision precisely to open a discussion on the future of rural areas and what steps we can take to make that future happen. Uh, the vision uh, and the actions included within it provides a tangible way of engaging with rural communities of showing to rural people that we recognize their importance and that we see a future for them. I am always keen on reminding that this support has basis in the treaty itself. Article 174 of the Treaty of the European Union clearly states that among the regions concerned, particular attention shall be paid to inter alia, alia rural areas. That is why it is so important to remember that in all interventions that are supposed to support these areas, it is crucial that they are implemented for them, not just in them. Uh, I am glad um, that you agree with us on the opportunities that await rural areas. We share your objective to make the most of the EU policies over the 2021-2027 period to progress towards this vision. Let me highlight the new common agriculture policy, which we are working hard to prepare for uh, 2023. Uh, as you say in your assessment, agriculture and food have a key role to play in, in building a bright future for rural areas. Uh, while the CAP has a focus on farmers, it is a key policy for the rural economy as a whole. Uh, a number of measures under rural development, that so-called second pillar of the common agricultural policy, are designed to strengthen the socio-economic fabric in rural areas by promoting jobs and growth social inclusion and local development. Rural development remains an essential part of the reform CAP. With over uh, 60 billion euro in funding for the 2023-2027 period. This fin uh, funding can contribute to all of the policy uh, policies objectives, in particular the specific objective on vibrant rural areas and can be challenged through key initiatives for rural communities, such as leader and uh, smart villages. Uh, when assessing the CAP plans submitted by member states, we are checking very carefully to ensure that the needs of rural areas as assessed in each country, as, as identified in the long-term vision, are well addressed through adequate interventions. We are also paying attention to how the plans support a coherent approach to the development of rural areas uh, through coordination and uh, complementarity between policies. For example, as uh, Vice President uh, Swisha mentioned earlier, the cohesion policy provides an uh, adaptable framework for member states and regions to support 
all territories. It is clear that the common agricultural policy and the cohesion policy can combine to provide a real enabling environment for member states and the regions to support rural areas. Uh, however, it is important to stress that other EU and national policies also have a significant role to play. We need to keep the rural dimension of policy making high on the agenda. This is essential if we are to have a truly balanced development of the European Union. Uh, looking at rural areas only as a part of uh, a territorial context or only from the point of view of some sectors of policies gives an uh, incomplete picture of their role in our society and uh, economy. Uh, that is why we have introduced the mechanism of rural proofing. Uh, this means we will look at various policies through a rural lens and question how they will affect rural areas. Effective rural proofing will require improving the data we have to access the situation of rural areas, the rural observatory that we are developing and which should deliver its first results by the end of 2022, will help us to progressively upgrade the evidence we have on rural areas. As you know, uh, we launched uh, in December the discussion on how to establish the Rural Pact, as uh, Vice President Suica recalled. Our Rural Pact will bring together all of our rural stakeholders from both the public and private uh, spheres and across European national, regional, regional and local levels. Participants in the pact will be invited to commit to the uh, 10 shared goals of the vision, which reflects uh, the needs and aspirations of rural residents and determined from extensive consultations. Uh, participants will then be invited to set out voluntary actions that can contribute to the realization of these goals. To enable participants to share progress and uh, stock of their actions, the Commission will maintain a dedicated website in addition to organizing a number of events and engagements. In this way, the pact will provide rural stakeholders from across Europe with a platform to share their ideas, challenges and successes, and to discuss opportunities for uh, cooperation. Uh, the high-level Rural Pact conference in June 2022 will be a key moment where all those who support the shared goals of the vision and who want to work towards their achievement will be able to make, to make concrete commitments. The Committee of region, uh, Regions has a key role to play in facilitating this engagement. I'm happy to note that uh, the Rural Pact community is already strong and growing every day with nearly uh, 500 subscribers and uh, counting. I, I would like to thank you for your will to work with us and uh, with all the levels of governance and stakeholders to develop this pact and to prepare the Rural Pact Conference. We have a lot, this, a lot of discuss on how to best organize a Rural Pact process to deliver real progress on the ground. On this note, I will finish my opening remarks, remarks and open the floor to our discussion. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Commissioner. Uh, and finally, and by no means least in terms of the opening uh, statements, it's now my pleasure to give the floor to Madam Isabel Carvalhais, uh, member of the European Parliament's Committee uh, on Agriculture, uh, Rural uh, Development, uh, and indeed Rapporteur uh, on the long-term uh, vision. Uh, Isabel, it's my pleasure now to give you the floor. 
Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Michael. And uh, since we have translation services available, I, I will use my mother tongue to make this presentation. Hope it's, uh, it's okay. So I'll speak slowly, uh, just in case some of the words may be missing. So I will start by saudar todos e todas, é muito em especial uh, os meus colegas de painel, uh, a senhora vice-presidente da, da Comissão Europeia, do, uh, do Bravka Svivka, e aqui tenho também o problema da pronúncia correta uh, do seu nome, e o mesmo desafio para uh, dizer o nome do senhor Comissário da Agricultura, Dianos uh, Wojcikowski, e portanto, se disserem mal o meu apelido, estão, estão perfeitamente desculpados porque uh, tenho estas limitações, como podem ver. E também uma saudação especial uh, ao relator da opinião do, do Comitê das Regiões, o Juan Manuel Moreno Bonilha, e aos senhores representantes regionais e locais que estão presentes nesta reunião de hoje. Uh, eu gostaria também de agradecer ao Comitê das Regiões, uh, na pessoa do seu presidente, o senhor Adesitzi Costas, pela, pela oportunidade que no fundo me, me dá de estar aqui e de poder uh, debater convosco um tema que nos é muito caro, que é o futuro das nossas zonas rurais na Europa. Como sabem, ainda agora foi dito, eu estou como relatora, portanto o Parlamento Europeu encontra-se em fase de construção do relatório sobre a visão de longo prazo da, da, da Comissão para o Mundo Rural e, nesse sentido, o vosso contributo é muito importante e é muito útil para o nosso trabalho. Uh, pessoalmente, enquanto relatora do Parlamento Europeu para, para este relatório, dou a máxima importância ao contributo e à colaboração com o Comitê das Regiões nesta matéria, na medida em que, uh, enfim, não digo nada de mais, o vosso conhecimento, a vossa experiência no terreno é por todos reconhecida e, portanto, são inputs essenciais para a concretização efetiva desta, desta visão. Uh, a comunicação da Comissão, uh, certamente que todos o reconhecemos, vem, vem dinamizar e vem dar centralidade e vem dar visibilidade política a um debate que é urgente e que não se limita, obviamente, às zonas rurais, que tem implicações sobre o que deve ser a coesão territorial no futuro e um debate a que somos todos chamados. Une-nos um grande objetivo, que é o de alcançar um desenvolvimento territorial mais harmonioso, o de reduzir as muitas desigualdades que ainda subsistem e com muita força em algumas áreas na Europa. E todos nós conhecemos os grandes desafios que são enfrentados pelas áreas rurais, aliás, por todos os trabalhos da Comissão e esta comunicação em particular, falo de uma forma muito clara, estão bem identificados todos esses desafios que não são iguais, não são sentidos da mesma forma, com a mesma intensidade, por todo o mundo rural. E obviamente que fazem-se sentido muito mais em zonas remotas, que têm constrangimentos específicos, como as regiões montanhosas, as regiões ultraperiféricas, etc. E portanto, neste contexto, e aqui também quero deixar isso, que podem contar com todo o meu empenho, e tenho a certeza com o empenho de todo o Parlamento Europeu, para a concretização desta visão sobre o mundo rural. Eu saúdo ainda a opinião elaborada pelo relator e pelos colegas do, do Comitê das Regiões, que, que será adotada, e com a qual encontro desde já vários pontos de convergência. É de facto, eu diria, é de facto uma pena que a, que a comunicação sobre a visão de longo prazo tenha chegado numa fase já tão avançada uh, da programação deste novo quadro financeiro, sendo que alguns dos instrumentos mais relevantes, nomeadamente os ligados à política de coesão e à política agrícola, se encontram também eles já numa fase uh, muito avançada da sua programação. Em todo o caso, este é o momento de início de execução do novo período de programação, e por isso eu julgo que será muito importante que não se percam estes anos, que se procure ao máximo encontrar propostas concretas para a ação imediata, em vez de nos focarmos apenas no longo prazo. Obviamente que temos de pensar no longo prazo, mas temos de compreender, e todos aqui nós compreendemos, que as nossas zonas rurais não podem ficar num limbo temporal e, portanto, há aqui uma urgência política nas respostas que temos de encontrar. E eu acredito 
que neste contexto, neste cenário, há ainda muito que pode ser feito agora. Até porque eh, os acordos de, de parceria e os planos estratégicos da, da PAC, da Política Agrícola Comum, estão na sua grande maioria ainda na fase de avaliação. E isso significa, na minha perspectiva, que ainda temos aqui uma janela de tempo que permitirá enquadrar pelo menos algumas das medidas preconizadas nesta visão. E eu espero sinceramente que a dimensão territorial rural seja de facto incluída no planeamento das medidas por parte de todos os Estados-membros, mas sobretudo por parte dos Estados que enfrentam mais desafios ao seu mundo rural e, e eu espero aqui também uma ação forte da Comissão a este nível. Uh, em paralelo, e mesmo dentro do quadro dos quadros legislativos existentes, é possível trabalhar muito melhor, tanto na implementação de ações como na sua articulação. Uh, eu estou certa de que já ouviram inúmeras vezes, tal como eu já ouvi inúmeras vezes, falar dos desafios que os atores locais enfrentam para combinar os diversos fundos e como tudo isso dificulta imenso a implementação de abordagens holísticas nas zonas, nas zonas rurais. E, portanto, nesse sentido, algo absolutamente urgente é conseguir melhorar as sinergias entre os diversos fundos. E importa igualmente não esquecer o papel que outros programas e fundos podem ter no apoio, podem e devem ter no apoio às zonas rurais, para além daquilo que são as políticas tradicionais que nós enumeramos sempre, como a política agrícola e a política de coesão. E será por isso também importante que outras políticas europeias, no futuro, mas no futuro a curto prazo, saibam incorporar esta visão territorial e a dimensão rural no desenho das suas medidas. Articulação, coordenação é fundamental. Gostaria ainda de salientar aqui, muito em particular, o papel da agricultura que é e que deverá continuar a ser um pilar das nossas comunidades rurais. Eu, eu costumo dizer um bocadinho a brincar que eh, nós até podemos conceber alguns modelos de agricultura fora do mundo rural, podemos imaginar agricultura sem ser no mundo rural. Basta pensar, por exemplo, na agricultura vertical uh, urbana ou nos processos de produção alimentar em laboratório, se bem que é discutível se aí estaremos a falar de agricultura. Agora, o que eu não consigo imaginar é mundo rural sem agricultura. E, portanto, é fundamental nós trazermos sempre para esta equação da sustentabilidade no mundo rural a agricultura. Não qualquer tipo de agricultura, obviamente, mas uma agricultura sustentável em todas as suas dimensões. Uma agricultura que proteja o património natural e ambiental dos nossos territórios e que é um bem maior das zonas rurais, como sabemos, e uma agricultura que providencie um rendimento justo aos nossos agricultores, que traga valor para as populações locais, que contribua para a fixação de jovens, para a criação de oportunidades de trabalho. Uma agricultura que, naturalmente, se articule com outras atividades, porque a diversificação económica é uma estratégia essencial para a criação de riqueza e a fixação de populações. E, portanto, nos cinco minutos que me foram dados, e que eu agradeço imenso, eu gostaria de dizer em conclusão de que precisamos, precisamos de facto, e estamos de acordo, de uma elevada ambição para o futuro das áreas, das áreas rurais, precisamos de pensar desde já como é que a dimensão rural deve ser incluída no próximo quadro de programação, de uma forma horizontal, de uma forma coordenada nas diferentes políticas europeias, não apenas nas tradicionais. Precisamos de descomplicar já o acesso e a articulação entre os diversos fundos para permitir as abordagens mais holísticas e integradas. Precisamos, com urgência, que tanto os acordos de parceria como os planos estratégicos nacionais, como os planos de recuperação e de resiliência fundamentais, tenham todos em conjunto uma visão coordenada e integrada sobre as prioridades para a coesão e para o desenvolvimento territorial dos respectivos Estados e que nessas prioridades esteja muito claramente a presença do mundo rural. Isto obviamente que também tem que ser o Estado, cada Estado-membro, a pensar e a inteligir essa mesma urgência, esta prioridade que deve ser dada ao mundo rural. 
e precisamos de responder com urgência política máxima ao crescente descontentamento das zonas rurais, que leva muitas vezes as pessoas nessas, nessas zonas a sentirem-se fora do contrato social. E isso explica muitos dos fenómenos de eh, desarticulação, de afastamento de interesse pela vida política e até mesmo de interesse pelo funcionamento do regime democrático. E não podemos deixar que isso aconteça. É nossa obrigação, de facto, mostrar de modo concreto a quem vive nos territórios rurais, sobretudo os mais desfavorecidos, porque nem todos os territórios rurais estão no mesmo patamar de desigualdade, devo dizer, mas temos que dizer a essas populações que todos efetivamente contam que não os abandonamos e, portanto, é esse certamente o objetivo que todos nós temos no Comitê, daqui no Parlamento, na Comissão, enfim, os, os Estados, todos os envolvidos, quando falamos numa estratégia, numa visão de longo prazo para o mundo rural. E ficava agora por aqui e depois terei a oportunidade novamente de, de falar mais à frente neste debate. Muito obrigada. Uh, thank you, uh, Isabel. Before uh, I open the floor to uh, members, I just want to make for me what is an important point. And of course, I'm wearing my hat as chair of the uh, Committee of the Regions Econ uh, Commission, and that's the importance, and Isabel touched on it, the importance of involving uh, local and regional authorities in a meaningful way uh, in the implementation phase of recovery uh, and resilience plans. I don't think anyone can argue the extent to which um, cities and regions were involved in the preparation phase, uh, disappointing, uh, non-existent, uh, to say the least. And in terms of addressing uh, the challenges, the challenges that we'll speak about now with uh, members from across uh, the regions uh, of uh, Europe, uh, the involvement of local and regional authorities is absolutely uh, key and there are risks and again I touch on what Isabel said in terms of overlap um, you know overlap between RRF and cohesion funds for example so I just want to really drive home the point and um, particularly to both commissioners the meaningful involvement uh, of local and regional authorities uh, in uh, the recovery and resilience uh, implementation uh, phase. You know, our rural areas are in the eye of a perfect storm. Their motivation, their ambition, and in particular, their resilience being tested uh, like never before. And in terms of navigating their way out of these challenges, addressing these challenges, instruments uh, like initiatives like the recovery and resilience are absolutely key. We all want maximum uh, impact uh, in terms of these once in a lifetime funds, but really just to drive home the importance of the involvement of LRAs in the implementation phase of instruments like RRF. And I hope we can count uh, on your support uh, in that regard. Um, so now uh, I'd like to open the floor to uh, members. Uh, the first uh, and appropriately, and I want to acknowledge the uh, uh, excellent work and all speakers mentioned uh, the rapporteur, Mr. Bonelli, president of the region of Andalusia. And it's my pleasure uh, to give you the floor, uh, Mr. Bonelli, the floor is yours. Estimado colega, querido presidente, vicepresidente del Comité de las Regiones, comisaria Suica, comisario Ochechowski. Señora miembro del Parlamento Europeo, Carvalais, me dirijo a ustedes en calidad de ponente del dictamen del Comité Europeo de las Regiones sobre la comunicación de la Comisión Europea, una visión a largo plazo para la zona rural, el cual será sometido a votación en la sesión de hoy mismo. Quisiera manifestar mi gratitud a todos aquellos miembros que han contribuido intensamente con sus aportaciones y enmiendas a enriquecer el contenido final del dictamen así como a la secretaria de la Comisión NAD, a mi grupo político y al equipo técnico de mi región, Andalucía. Estoy convencido de que nuestro esfuerzo redundará en beneficio de la ciudadanía. Ante la urgencia de poner en práctica propuestas concretas de acción inmediata, el modelo de gobernanza europeo debe implicar a los actores locales y regionales que serán esenciales para poner en marcha el Pacto Rural presentado por la Comisión a finales del pasado mes de diciembre. Consideramos que los ámbitos estratégicos que sustenten el Pacto Rural deberían ser la agricultura, la movilidad, 
la conectividad digital y las energías renovables por su potencial para desarrollar soluciones prácticas y medios de apoyo para frenar el despoblamiento, facilitar el relevo generacional y generar oportunidades sociales y económicas ligadas siempre al Pacto Verde. Para llevarlo a cabo es necesario avanzar en la valoración de los servicios ecosistémicos que presta la naturaleza en sectores tan relevantes como el turismo rural, el sostenible o el ocio o la cultura. Asimismo, la agricultura deberá seguir jugando un papel crucial. La colaboración entre las regiones y las instituciones europeas será vital para tutelar el desarrollo de la nueva política agraria común y acompañar a los agricultores en esa transición ecológica. Las mujeres y los jóvenes deben estar en el centro de este proceso, de manera muy especial los jóvenes. Creemos también necesario una simplificación de los fondos europeos, mejora en la forma en que se combinan y un cambio a un modelo de fondo múltiple que integre a las zonas rurales de todas las políticas. Igualmente, instamos a la Comisión a que abarque un periodo más amplio en su informe de 2024 de cara al refuerzo de la financiación en las zonas rurales. El presente dictamen reúne en detalle estas iniciativas y alberga el espíritu crítico y constructivo necesario para impulsar una mejora desde el punto de vista de las regiones y ciudades los gente más cercano a la ciudadanía. Querida Duravka, Suica, querido Janusz Bochechowski, las regiones europeas estamos deseando trabajar codo con codo con la Comisión en la implantación de la visión a largo plazo para las zonas rurales. Contá con todo nuestro apoyo para abordar juntos los principales retos a los que se enfrenta la ciudadanía. Querida Isabel Carvalais, esperamos que el dictamen que se aprobará hoy contribuye a enriquecer el informe del que usted es ponente en el Parlamento Europeo. A través de este dictamen deseamos integrar mejor al mundo rural y ayudar a los entes legislativos europeos a aproximarse aún más a las necesidades de sus ciudades y de sus regiones. Muchas gracias a todos por su esfuerzo, su colaboración y su compromiso. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Bonelli, and uh, and again, just to acknowledge your work uh, as rapporteur, again, um, and because uh, rep being rapporteur, of course, I was going to give you um, uh, some discretion in terms of time, but going forward, I will strictly adhere to the times uh, uh, allotted, and I would ask you to uh, respect that. Uh, next, please, uh, Member uh, Strissen, uh, you have the floor. Dear Vice President, Dear Commissioner, ladies and gentlemen, long-term vision for rural areas is the first important step for revival of rural areas. However, it is crucial to transform it into reality so that it is not just a fairy tale on paper. Rural areas belong to the most vulnerable ones and EU should focus on them with special attention. Targeted approach across all policies, much higher funding across all funds, including new generation EU, and the right tools should help to solve the main problems, the eldering population, brain drain, and low living standards. Rural areas are not a museum. Rural areas should unlock their potential using modern technologies and smart approaches. Digital transformation can bring services, jobs, education, medical and social care, and public administration straight to the living rooms of people, and as a result, make rural areas much more attractive place to live for all generations, including the young people, as a blood of future. We should create stimulating conditions for young entrepreneurs and innovations of local businesses. We should introduce basic quality standards of infrastructure and services provided in rural areas, as have been successfully done in South Korea and some other countries. We should foster rural urban linkages. Finally, it is crucial to bring back pride to rural areas. For example, through engaging people much more into the local development, through bottom-up, place-based and integrated approaches like Leader CLLD. Here, I'd love to stress out the recommendation of the Committee of the Regions for mandatory earmarking of 8% for Leader CLLD from all SE funds and EAFRD. I am proud to live in rural areas and we should do our best through this vision to persuade everyone how it is sexy to live in, rural, in, in the rural areas. Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Dubrovslavic, you have the floor. Hvala predsjedavajući, poštovana podpredsjednica Šujica, poštovani povjerenče 
Vojciechowski, poštovana gospođo Karvaljes, kolegice i kolege, želim zahvaliti na predstavljanju komunikacije o dugoročnoj viziji za ruralna područja Europske unije. Ruralna područja predstavljaju golemi dio ukupnog prostora Europske unije i golem potencijal bez i bez odgovarajućeg pristupa razvoju ruralnih područja nemoguće pravilan razvoj Europske unije. U regiji iz koje dolazim više od 50% stanovništva živi u ruralnom području. Ono je prevažno zbog poljoprivrede, zbog turizma, za očuvanje prirode i okoliša, važno je za ukupnost življenja naših sugrađana na tom prostoru. U cijeloj Hrvatskoj, pa i u našoj regiji, svjedoci smo porazne depopulacije, posebno na ruralnim prostorima. Dio stanovništva odljeva se u razvijene zemlje Europske unije, dio u gradove, čime se ti prostori prazne. Odljev s ruralnog područja je poguban, treba ga zaustaviti, u najmanju ruku odmah smanjiti. Smanjenju odljeva u velike su pridonijeli fondovi Europske unije kroz održanje proizvodnje, povećanje kvalitete življenja na ruralnom području, međutim, to još nije dovoljno. Koliko god gradovi bili motori razvoja, a oni to jesu, oni imaju tendenciju usisavanja stanovništva i time siromaše ruralne prostore. To treba spriječiti. Za to je dugoročna strategija nužna. U traženju rješenja nužno je uključiti regionalnu i lokalnu samoupravu, posebno onu s ruralnih područja. Dakle, potpora ruralnom paktu, ruralnom akcijskom planu i veselimo se sudjelovanju u kreiranju održivih rješenja. Thank you. Uh, Madam Rodriguez, please. Is Madam Rodriguez connected, Madam Rodriguez? Estimadas vicepresidenta y eurodiputada, estimado comisario, queridos colegas, las políticas de la Unión Europea, en especial la de cohesión y la política agraria común, deben contar con la dimensión rural y con la participación activa de las autoridades regionales y locales y de la ciudadanía. Las zonas rurales necesitan herramientas legislativas y financieras también que les permitan aprovechar al máximo su potencial y enfrentarse a desafíos como el cambio demográfico, la conectividad y el riesgo de pobreza o el acceso limitado a los servicios. La Comisión Europea ha respondido al reto y nos ha provisto de la estrategia visión a largo plazo para las zonas rurales. No obstante, los tiempos no han sido los adecuados. Lamentamos que la publicación de la estrategia se produzca una vez cerradas las negociaciones sobre la política agrícola común. Tenemos que ayudar al desarrollo de estas zonas facilitándoles la tarea. Para nuestro grupo es muy importante, en primer lugar, la diversificación de la economía rural, desarrollando un modelo que vaya más allá del sector agrícola. En segundo lugar, hay que dotar a las zonas rurales de administraciones transversales y formadas para que puedan responder a sus necesidades. En tercer lugar, la simplificación normativa para poder gestionar fondos europeos y participar en proyectos. La cuarta es la puesta en marcha y la evaluación de la estrategia, con objetivos muy concretos, cuantificables, en términos de acceso principalmente a los servicios públicos, que no debemos de olvidar, es un derecho. El principal derecho es la igualdad de las personas con independencia del territorio donde vivan o con independencia de su edad. Para mi región, el futuro pasa por la retención y la atracción de jóvenes. Y por eso hemos lanzado el proyecto G30 Juventud La Rioja. Es un grupo formado por 15 hombres y 15 mujeres que van a diseñar proyectos de nueva ruralidad para las zonas despobladas. Este proyecto, G30, es pionero en España. Para concluir, 
En La Rioja estamos trabajando en un plan a medio y largo plazo, porque el, parla el Parlamento ha recomendado que los fondos estructurales tengan en cuenta la despoblación y ha aprobado un conjunto de medidas transversales con la implicación de los beneficiarios. Las zonas rurales en Europa son espacios llenos de oportunidades y tenemos que ser capaces con todas las capacidades que tenemos ahora, con todo lo que tenemos ahora a disposición, de ofrecer modelos alternativos para ocupar el territorio. Gracias. Uh, thank you, Madam uh, Rodriguez. Uh, next, please, Madam Landrigan, you have the floor. Thank you, Michael, for the floor. Uh, dear commissioners, uh, dear Mr. Uh, Mrs. Cavallius, the NAF Commission of the Committee of the Region has been raising awareness for the needs and the potential of rural areas for many years. We called for a European strategy in this respect as early as 2016. Therefore, I wholeheartedly welcome the long-term vision. Uh, and uh, it demonstrates very well the many dimensions that we have to tackle for giving rural areas and their communities the place that they deserve. In the spirit of true cohesion, we need to ensure that the principles now are the three E's are complied with. Equivalent living standard for the rural and the urban, which should be included as a basic principle in all European policies. Equal rights for all, whether they live in cities or in rural areas. Equity in means and practice across all players and territories, in particular making use of a changes and shared competencies to compensate for the specific needs of rural territorials. In this spirit, and to the mutual benefits of rural and urban Europeans, we are working closely together between the NAT and the core quarter commission in the Committee of the Region. I therefore welcome that the French presidency will discuss the next cohesion report with a specific focus on the rural development on the 1st of March. The COVID crisis has reminded us of the importance of digital connectivity. In our everyday lives, it is essential that urgent that we close the, t that we close the digital gap between rural and urban areas so that all children have access to quality education, local authorities can provide easily accessible services, and businesses can connect to the internal market. If we want to succeed with the long-term vision, we need to do more for and with the local communities. Many Europeans, especially the rural regions, feel left behind and forgotten. They lose interest in Europe or even turn their back against it. We have to involve them again in our discussion and decisions. That's what the democracy is all about. To conclude, I would like to reiterate our call for European Rural Agenda to define concrete proposals for immediate action to support the long-term vision and call for concrete proposals that are accompanied by resources and quantitative targets uh, for the long-term vision. And I'm looking forward to work with both Thank the you. commissioners and the parliament and see you Thank in you. Marseille. Thank you, Mr. Sestek. Uh, Mr. Sestek, um, a reminder to click on the speak button to uh, switch it to red in order to be seen and heard. Mr. Shestek. Okay, we'll move along. No, okay, we're there. We're there. Tisztelt Hölgyeim és Uraim! A globalizáció legnagyobb vesztesei a vidéki térségek és az itt élő emberi közösségek, települések, családok, valamint az egyének. Minél kisebb és periférikus helyzetű egy település, annál inkább igaz ez. Ezen belül is vannak speciális helyzetű régiók, 
mint a hegyvidékek, vagy a szigetek és a határmenti térségek. A 2040-ig tartó hosszú távú jövőképben a régiók bizottságának különös felelőssége van. Védenünk kell ezeket a térségeket, hiszen az Európát alkotó földrajzi és kulturális sokszínűség, mint európai alapértékek letéteményesei sok kihívással küzdenek, amelyek jellemzőek egész Európára, de ezekben a térségekben sokszorosan jelentkeznek. Mindenek előtt a demográfiai kihívás. A születésszám csökkenése mellett ezeket a térségeket az elvándorlás is sújtja. Az éghajlatváltozás negatív hatásai ugyancsak károsak. Ha lehetetlenné válik a mezőgazdasági termelés, ez is erősíti az elvándorlást. Fontos, hogy a 2040-ben tartó jövőképhez a cselekvési terv négy tengelyhez kilenc kiemelt projektet javasol. Nagyon fontos a megfelelő infrastruktúra, a megosztáson alapuló gazdaság fejlesztése, mint a jövő eddig kiaknázatlan lehetősége. Kiemelten gondolok a digitális infrastruktúrára, hiszen számos olyan munkahely létezik és fog a jövőben létezni, amely nem igényel fizikai jelenlétet. A vidéki térségeket érintő sokrétű problémakörnek a társadalmi, kulturális dimenzióját emelném ki. Az Európai Unió fontos célkitűzése a természeti környezeti értékek sokszínűség védelme. Ez igaz az emberi társadalmat, a helyi közösségek sajátos viszonyának védelmére is. Fokozottan igaz ez a vidéki térségekre. Fontosnak tartjuk a kilenc kiemelt projekten belül a vidéki térségek újjáélesztése projektben a kulturális hagyományok, a sokszínűség védelmét. Helyes, hogy az irányítási mechanizmusként a vidékfejlesztési paktum javaslata hangzott el. Javasoljuk a térségi munkaügyi paktumokhoz hasonlóan a program megvalósításában leginkább érintett területi önkormányzatok vezetésével és az érintett területi szereplők bevonásával térségenként vidékfejlesztési paktumok megalakítását. Végezetül a vidékre ne a problémák forrásaként, hanem lehetőségként a társadalmi reprodukció, a körforgáshoz gazdaság, a biztonságos helyben megtermelt élelmiszer, a rekreációt biztosító turizmus helyeiként tekintsük. Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Draghisi, you have the floor. Domnule președinte, stimați colegi, în numele grupului Alianța Europeană și la cererea coordonatorului nostru, domnul Marius Strugala, Darius Strugala, vin cu acest mesaj. Mă bucur că am ocazia să intervin în plenul Comitetului European al Regiunilor pe o temă aproape de sufletul meu, a unui primar de comune și felicit Comuna Euro Comisia Europeană că a făcut o prioritate din aceasta. Zona rurală este una dintre valorile fundamentale și definitorii pentru Europa, care trebuie prezervată, îngrijită și promovată, astfel cum este definit prin agenda de la Lisabona, ne trebuie să fie privită doar ca o problemă, ci ca o oportunitate. Încă din 1985 se acordă unui oraș sau mai multora pentru un an titlul onorific Capitală Europeană a Culturii. De ce nu am putea avea și titlul onorific Capitală Europeană Rurală? Chiar dacă ar fi inițiat din 2024, tot am fi în urmă cu 39 de ani față de orașe, dar mai bine mai în urmă decât deloc. Pentru asta nu ne trebuie inteligență artificială. Ne trebuie doar inteligență și voință politică. Salut inițiativa Comisiei Europene privind Pactul Rural și Planul de Acțiune Rurală, dar așteptăm să le vedem și să vedem și efectele produse. Goana după banii produși repede în zonele urbane a făcut să fie neglijate teritoriile rurale care contribuie la bunăstarea zonelor urbane, cu un impact negativ în ceea ce privește depopularea accelerată a multor sate. Dezbaterile pe această temă ar trebui să pornească de la o abordare inteligentă pentru a avea acele sate și orașe inteligente de care tot vorbim. Credem că politica Uniunii Europene nu are o abordare echilibrată și armonizată între rural și urban, acestea din urmă dedicându-se sprijin și energie mai multă în detrimentul ruralului. Zonele rurale constituie viitorul zonei urbane, viitorul statelor noastre, viitorul Uniunii Europene. Mulțumesc! Uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Bob, you have the floor. Ja, vielen Dank, Herr Vorsitzender. Vielen Dank, Frau Vizepräsidentin, Herr Kommissar, Frau Caveia. Ich glaube, man muss einmal sagen, wo in den letzten 30 Jahren 
schon die Möglichkeiten der europäischen Politik für den ländlichen Raum offensiv wahrgenommen wurden, haben wir richtig vitale ländliche Räume bekommen. Wir sehen große Unterschiede und äh, ich möchte an dieser Stelle sagen, es ist gut, dass wir jetzt diese Strategie haben. Aber ich muss zugleich kritisieren, sie wird ja mit Finanzen entsprechend hinterlegt werden müssen. Und das Problem ist, dass wir im Grunde sie bekommen haben, äh, nachdem die GAP beschlossen wurde. Ähm, die Chancen sind schon gesagt worden, Digitalisierung, neue Arbeitsplatzsituationen, die wahrgenommen werden können. Ich möchte einen wichtigen Punkt noch nennen und das ist der äh, Punkt, dass äh, wir ein anderes Selbstbewusstsein dem ländlichen Raum geben können. Der Green Deal wird nur gehen mit einer intensiven Beteiligung des ländlichen Raums, wo sonst können die erneuerbaren Energien, ihre Infrastruktur, ihre Technologien entsprechend aufgebaut werden, entwickelt werden, dass der Kontinent unabhängig wird von Energieimporten. Vielen Dank. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Brisen. Mr. Brizan, just a reminder to click on the speak button. You have the microphone. Uh, thank you, Chair. Uh, dear commissioners, dear colleagues, uh, I fully support uh, today's debate. It's uh, most important. And uh, I would have a question for uh, Mr. Janusz Wojciechowski, Commissioner for Agriculture, possibly, uh, whom I have honored to meet in Brussels on 23rd of September in, uh, on the very first EU Organic Day. Uh, based on Eurostat definition, we have three uh, different areas in Europe, rural, intermediate and urban areas. With this uh, long term vision, we are only addressing rural areas, which consists of 30% of population and about 80% of surface of EU territory. So my question would be, aren't we facing a threat that an important part of EU territory will be left out with uh, clearly also rural dimension? Thank you. Uh, thank you. Uh, colleagues, at this stage, uh, I'm back. Uh, somebody took the microphone from me. Uh, colleagues, at this stage, uh, I think it's a, we'll revert to our, our, our guest uh, speakers uh, and maybe we'll begin with some initial reactions from Commissioner uh, Suiza. Uh, Commissioner, you have the floor. Thank you very much. I'm really glad to have the opportunity to intervene once again, because I would like to highlight in particular uh, some points. The first one is rule proofing. What we have tried with this vision is to make sure that we systematically analyze the impact and potential contribution each policy could have on the development of rural areas and communities. This is absolutely key if we are serious about wanting rural areas to feel included in the decision making process. And we are serious. Rule proofing will be applied to relevant European Union legislation by using territorial impact assessment as well as different policy initiatives that we will have. Another novelty that we have introduced is the Rural Observatory. Uh, the European uh, uh, Rural uh, Observatory should become operational this year, and it will improve data collection and analysis for rural areas. And it will also provide comprehensive and up-to-date evidence to inform policymaking. It will produce a rural data portal and annual analytical papers on rural issues. The observatory will cover five thematic blocks. Demography, economic development, social issues, labor education and health, and also infrastructure services and accessibility. We are now developing the research questions under each of these uh, themes. But many interventions concern funds for today for rural areas and, it, and very specifically. I want to highlight here that this is indeed a long-term vision, but the one that we have intentionally underpinned by the very concrete proposals for immediate actions. And mid next year, we will all, as I already said, 
will take stock of what concrete actions have been carried out and uh, programmed in support of rural areas for the current 2021-2027 period. To help rural areas better navigate through European funds, we will publish a handbook on European funds and toolkit on the combination of European Union funding opportunities. All this because we share your sense of urgency. And it is our duty uh, with the meaningful involvement of local and regional authorities, best use is made of funds and our initiatives for the benefit of the rural areas. And with that, uh, to make clear to those who live in rural areas that everybody and every place counts and nobody is abandoned, as we already said. I would also like to highlight that in March this year, we will have a ministerial discussion on the long-term vision under the French presidency. And we very much welcome uh, the council conclusions on the topic before the end of the French presidency, as they will also serve as the guidance for the way uh, for our way ahead. So thank you very much for your interventions. And I hope I a I little bit clarified more what are our intentions. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Vice President. Uh, and now, if I may ask Commissioner Wojciechowski uh, to intervene. Uh, Commissioner, you have the floor. Dziękuję bardzo. Odpowiem w moim ojczystym języku polskim. E, bardzo dziękuję za naprawdę e, interesującą, konstruktywną, bardzo ciekawą debatę. E, I cieszę się, że wypowiedzi idą w tym samym kierunku, w którym zmierza długoterminowa wizja rozwoju obszarów wiejskich w tej, w tym, ta, ta wizja, którą przedstawiła komisja. I no rzeczywiście obszary wiejskie zostały trochę zapomniane w polityce europejskiej. To trzeba bardzo wyraźnie powiedzieć. Ja nie bez powodu cytowałem artykuł 174 traktatu, który mówi o tym, że te obszary powinny być traktowane ze szczególną uwagą, a jeśli sięgniemy do aktualnie jeszcze obowiązujących rozporządzeń dotyczących przepisów dotyczących funduszy spójności, to tam obszary wiejskie traktowane są z dużo mniejszą uwagą niż obszary miejskie bo bodaj ponad 50 razy są wymienione obszary wiejskie w, w, w rozporządzeniu dotyczącym polityki spójności, a obszary wiejskie tylko 5 razy. Całe e, rozdziały są poświęcone obszarom miejskim, a nie ma takiego w odniesieniu do obszarów wiejskich i to, jest, e, i to, to musimy zmienić. E, w jakiejś mierze wspólna polityka rolna, która jest, no, jest dobrodziejstwem dla, dla rolnictwa i dla obszarów wiejskich, ale ona spowodowała trochę takie myślenie, że Ponieważ obszary wiejskie mają swoją politykę rolną, to niewiele więcej im potrzeba. To już fundusze spójności raczej powinny być przeznaczone dla obszarów miejskich. Otóż to, to jest główne przesłanie długoterminowej wizji, żeby to podejście zmienić. I tutaj były wypowiedzi niektórych z Państwa, pan czy pani Landergen, o równych standardach życia i, 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 i o prawie mieszkańców do obszarów wiejskich do takich samych warunków życia, to, to, to w wielu wypowiedziach się powtarzało. W pełni to, to, to popieram. Tak, mieszkańcy obszarów wiejskich mają takie samo prawo dostępu do usług publicznych, do edukacji, do dóbr kultury, do, do, do usług publicznych, do transportu. To wykluczenie transportowe z komunikacji publicznej obszarów wiejskich jest dużym, dużą, dużym problemem i przyczyną wyludniania się tych obszarów. I musimy mieć to holistyczne podejście, to o czym mówiła pani Karwanajsz z, z Parlamentu Europejskiego i wykorzystanie wszystkich dostępnych funduszy. My mamy w tej chwili trzy główne źródła finansowania. Wspólną politykę rolną, mamy fundusze spójności, które zdecydowanie w większym stopniu powinny być adresowane do obszarów wiejskich. No i mamy teraz fundusze odbudowy. One również powinny służyć wsparciu obszarów wiejskich. Ja podam taki przykład jak powinna działać w moim przekonaniu ta synergia w, i, 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 i użycie różnych funduszy. Rolnictwo e, ekologiczne. Wielka szansa dla, e, zwłaszcza dla tych regionów, gdzie dominuje 
małe i średnie gospodarstwa, małe i średnie gospodarstwa rodzinne. Wiele z nich straciliśmy, wiele z nich zniknęło. W ciągu dekady około 4 milionów takich małych gospodarstw nam zniknęło niestety ze złymi skutkami dla... To zakłóciło równowagę w rozwoju obszarów wiejskich. Wiele z nich istnieje, ale nie, nie jest w stanie konkurować z bardzo intensywną, masową produkcją przemysłową czasami. Więc wspar rolnictwo organiczne może być szansą, dla, zwłaszcza dla małych i średnich gospodarstw, tym bardziej, że rośnie popyt na produkty ekologiczne, na żywność ekologiczną bardzo silnie i w Europie i w świecie. I teraz potrzebujemy synergii różnych środków z różnych polityk. Wspólna polityka rolna to wsparcie dla gospodarstw i to w obu filarach wspólnej polityki rolnej możemy wspierać rozwój gospodarstw ekologicznych. No ale potrzebne jest przetwórstwo tych produktów. Z tym jest problem. Są fundusze odbudowy, one mogą znakomicie posłużyć odbudowie właśnie takiego małego przetwórstwa lokalnego, które może wesprzeć produkcję ekologiczną, zresztą nie tylko ekologiczną, też te krótkie łańcuchy dostaw, które są bardzo ważne w takim zrównoważonym rozwoju. No i wreszcie polityka spójności, która na przykład może służyć tworzeniu takich rynków lokalnych, samorządy mogą otrzymywać na to fundusze i organizować promocję produktów ekologicznych, produktów lokalnych, produktów z krótkiego łańcucha dostaw, to, to już działa w niektórych państwach. Są, są kraje, gdzie to już do, jest dosyć rozwinięte, no ale w skali całej Unii musimy naprawdę zrobić bardzo wiele, żeby ten równomierny, zrównoważony rozwój obszarów wiejskich wspierać, używając środków ze wszystkich dostępnych uni, unijnych polityk. Chcę wyraźnie powiedzieć, że no, teraz jesteśmy na etapie tworzenia planów strategicznych wspólnej polityki rolnej. To są bardzo ważne dokumenty. One dają państwom członkowskim bardzo duże możliwości dostosowania czy użycia tych instrumentów wspólnej polityki rolnej, które są najbardziej odpowiednie do specyficznej sytuacji w poszczególnych państwach. Dużo więcej elastyczności jest we wspólnej polityce rolnej i to jest bardzo dobre. Natomiast no ważne jest, żeby, żeby państwa członkowskie, tworząc te plany strategiczne, tworzyły je w, sta w takiej wizji nie tylko samej wspólnej polityki rolnej, ale właśnie w synergii z innymi dostępnymi funduszami, z polityką spójności, z, z polityką odbudowy. Na to będziemy zwracać uwagę w, tej, w tym dialogu z państwami członkowskimi przy tworzeniu planów strategicznych dla wspólnej polityki rolnej. Jeszcze raz bardzo dziękuję. Widzę, że znaczy jestem przekonany, że mamy, że ta wizja długoterminowego rozwoju obszarów wiejskich jest wspólną wizją i Komisji, i Parlamentu Europejskiego, co znakomicie było widoczne w wystąpieniu pani Karwalajsz, ale także z wizją, jakie, jaką prezentują regiony, bo to było właściwie widoczne we wszystkich wystąpieniach państwa członków Komitetu Regionów. Bardzo dziękuję za niezwykle interesującą debatę i, 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 i taką właśnie takie holistyczne podejście do rozwoju obszarów wiejskich. To jest ogromna szansa na, na przyszłość, że wspólnie będziemy ten, ten rozwój właśnie w tym kierunku współtworzyć. Dziękuję bardzo. Uh, thank you, uh, Commissioner uh, by uh, Czeskowski. Um, I'm conscious that uh, both you, Commissioner, uh, and uh, the Vice President uh, may have uh, other uh, engagements. Of, of course, uh, we'd welcome, and you are more than welcome, to remain for the rest of uh, this debate. But in case you can't, um, I just on behalf of the CUR, uh, membership just to thank you very much for joining us today for participating uh, with us on such an important uh, topic and we very much look forward to ongoing and uh, future uh, cooperation uh, with you uh, both. Uh, I'd now like to give the floor to uh, our Member of Parliament uh, Isabel Carvalice. Isabel you have the floor. Thank you very much. I'll be very brief because you were already so generous uh, in my initial presentation. And I would summarize everything that I heard here in three key words. These words being pride, strategy and empowerment. These are my choices. We heard here the, 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 uh, the concept of, of feeling pride and we have to help our rural areas 
to feel proud uh, of themselves. And I would say not just proud of their identity, of their traditions, but also of the fact that the rural world is more and more recognized as the, the locus of the future, where we can actually have a decarbonized Europe. So uh, we're not the past, we are the future, we the rural areas. But for that, we need a strategy, as uh, Mr. Dobrov, Dobrojlavik was saying, again, the name, sorry. But I heard him very carefully, and uh, he was saying that this strategy is obviously also in terms of avoiding, we know this problem, the hyper-concentration of resources uh, uh, in, in bigger towns, in, in big cities. And, and obviously this implies at the same time that we can contradict this uh, hyper-concentration with measures, with, with, with projects that can uh, indeed solve the problems in the rural areas. And for instance, we, we heard here uh, Concepcion uh, talking about the, the importance of economic uh, diversification as a way, for instance, to contradict uh, this, this tendency of, of having people going into the urban areas and living in the countryside. Uh, but uh, even this uh, these, uh, economic diversification and other uh, projects and other strategies that we can present, they all imply that we also have equality and equity, as we also heard here. Equity and equality in the access to opportunities, in the access to education services, to basic services, uh, health services. Otherwise, uh, we can have wonderful uh, agricultural projects, but if we don't have these basic services, as we know, it's very difficult to, to make sure that people will, will, will stay in the future in, this, in these areas. And then we heard on several occasions uh, by our intervenants today, the, the importance of local approaches, of, of local-based approaches. And of course, this implies strong uh, local authorities and local stakeholders. This implies the empowerment of local level. And this, I think, it's something that uh, different member states have to think differently because they also depart from different levels of political and administrative organization. And this has to be equated differently, but it's really, really important. And I, I will stop here. I was delighted to listen to, to you all. And I think in, in general terms, as uh, Mr. Uh, Commissioner and uh, uh, Ms. Vice President were saying, uh, we are very much in, in, in agreement with, with the essential uh, in terms of what is that we want to do for uh, the, the, the well-being and, and the resilience of the rural world in the near future. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Uh, thank you, uh, Isabel. And again, as uh, as I said to the uh, Vice President and the Commissioner, just a thank you for your uh, participation and we look forward uh, to uh, future cooperation uh, with you uh, as as well. Uh, and your colleagues, now we go back to uh, members. Uh, the first um, being uh, Mr. Schmidt. Uh, you have the floor. Ja, vielen Dank. Ich kann an das Gesagte jetzt sofort anschließen. Ich bin als Minister für Regionalentwicklung in Sachsen sowohl für die städtische Entwicklung als auch für die ländliche Entwicklung und für die Transformationsregionen zuständig. Und wir müssen diese über Entwicklung in Stadt und Land übergreifend denken. Also wir dürfen die Räume nicht gegeneinander ausschließen. Wir müssen aber vor allen Dingen neben der europäischen Vision für den ländlichen Raum auch die individuellen Visionen in den Regionen, die sehr, sehr unterschiedlich geprägt sind, fördern, Räume lassen, dass Entwicklungen zugelassen sind. Die Menschen müssen selber sich als Zukunftsregion verstehen, Projekte entwickeln. Wir machen das mit Wettbewerben für innovative Ideen im ländlichen Raum. Wir haben die Liederförderung komplett in die Regionen gegeben. Wir machen mit einem Innovation Hub Projekte im Bereich Smart City, intelligente Verkehrssysteme und so weiter. Also mit den Menschen die Räume entwickeln, die Visionen entwickeln lassen, dann wird es auch eine Zukunftsregion, dann wird es auch ein Gewinn. Vielen Dank. Uh, can I just ask the technical team just to make sure that my microphone stays live? I seem to, at least on two occasions, to have lost 
uh, my microphone. Uh, Madam Honey, you have the floor. Madam Honey, a reminder to uh, click on the speak button to switch it to red in order to be seen and heard. Uh, we'll move on. I can come back to Madam Hone. Uh, Madam uh, Nota, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Mr. Geachtelede Gasten. Vandaag bespreken we het advies van mijn partijgenoot Bonilla over de EU-plattelandstrategie. De daarin beschreven kansen en uitdagingen voor het platteland zijn heel herkenbaar, ook voor mijn eigen dichtbevolkte land. Goede bereikbaarheid en beschikbaarheid van goede voorzieningen zijn een uitdaging. De energietransitie is een kans. We kijken daarom uit naar de High Level Conference in juni en denken graag mee over de invulling van interbestuurlijke samenwerking. De Nederlandse delegatie wil de commissie en het parlement oproepen om aan te sluiten bij wat er op lokaal en regionaal niveau gebeurt. Zo zal in Nederland samen een nationaal programma landelijk gebied worden opgesteld. Europa kan haar meerwaarde bewijzen door op deze programma's voor te bouwen. En laat ik ook expliciet het LIDA-programma noemen, waarbij bottom-up wordt samengewerkt met stakeholders in dorpen en steden. En tenslotte, laat ons meepraten. Geef ons middelen. Het platteland mag dan heel divers zijn in Europa, maar is en blijft van fundamenteel belang nu en in de toekomst. Dank u. Uh, thank you, uh, Ellen. Uh, one last attempt for Madam Hone. You have the floor. Is Madam Hone with us? Madam Honey, uh, Allah, just a reminder to click on the on the speak button, please. Uh, no, we must move on. Uh, Madam Fernandez, you have the floor. Uh, Madam Fernandez Viana, you have the floor. A reminder to click on the speak button. Muchísimas gracias, señor presidente. El 24 de noviembre de 2021, Cantabria organizó en el Castillo de Argüello un diálogo ciudadano interregional en torno a los desafíos de las regiones de montaña. 30 ciudadanos debatieron sobre educación, sanidad, conectividad, emprendimiento. Pusieron encima de la mesa las desventajas naturales de las zonas de montaña, al ser consideradas zonas en riesgo de despoblación, y reflexionaron sobre lo que se espera del futuro y cómo Europa puede contribuir a paliar la brecha existente entre las zonas rurales y urbanas. Sus ideas y propuestas se han recogido en un documento que colgaremos en la plataforma de la conferencia sobre el futuro de Europa y que les invito a consultar. Quiero destacar tres ideas fundamentales. Es urgente acelerar la conectividad global poniendo fecha para conseguirlo y las administraciones públicas deben de desplegar esa conectividad en las zonas que no son rentables económicamente. Es necesario solucionar el problema de acceso a la vivienda. Las escuelas y los centros educativos deben de ser transmisores de la cultura local. La Unión Europea tiene que hacerse eco de las necesidades y expectativas del mundo rural y ofrecer soluciones a través de programas de ayudas y de redes para intercambiar buenos ejemplos. Muchísimas gracias. Uh, thank you. Uh, Madam uh, Glonek uh, Maron, you have the floor. Oui, merci, Monsieur le Président y chers collègues. Je salue bien sûr ce processus proposé par la Commission depuis 2019 et je salue aussi bien sûr l'avis de notre collègue José Manuel Moreno Bonilla. En tant qu'élu rural et coprésidente de la Commission Ruralité des Maires de France, je veux souligner trois, euh, trois éléments. D'abord, indiquer fortement que les ruralités vivent une transition importante, très importante vers un statut de territoire d'avenir, dynamique, terre d'accueil, avec une accélération, bien sûr, due à la pandémie. 
Ensuite, demander à l'Union européenne, aux fonds européens, aux côtés de tous les États membres, d'accompagner ces nouveaux dynamismes qui, euh, et leur apporter des financements et de l'ingénierie qui est aujourd'hui insuffisante pour euh, construire cette transition qui concerne autant l'agriculture que l'emploi, la formation, le télétravail, l'aménagement numérique ou encore même le logement. Enfin, il faudrait qu'un un agenda rural européen soit établi et qu'il soit le socle d'accueil de ces populations avec des services publics, fierté, équité, résilience. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Fernandez Vara, please. Ah. Si, sí, uh... Un saludo para todos, muy, muy buenas tardes. Eh, brevemente, eh, con motivo de la pandemia, la Europa de las grandes ciudades descubrió a la Europa que le da de comer. Por tanto, la lucha contra la despoblación no es solo un objetivo de los que viven en el medio rural, sino del conjunto de europeos y de europeas, entre otras cosas, si quieren seguir comiendo en el futuro. ¿no? Segunda idea, eh, el empleo. Para que haya eh, el mantenimiento de población en el medio rural tiene que haber trabajo para la gente y un trabajo decente. ¿no? Por eso, en el proceso de reindustrialización de Europa hay que pensar en llevar también industria a, lo, a las zonas rurales. Y, en tercer lugar, vivienda. Para poder eh, desarrollar un proyecto de vida y de familia hace falta también viviendas accesibles que sean y que permitan desarrollar eh, una vida normalizada. ¿no? Pues de esto se trata, de pensar en la Europa de todos, de pensar en el empleo de la gente y de pensar en cómo van a vivir. Y eso se llama estrategia para la, el reto demográfico, que en Extremadura lo hemos dado en forma de una ley que ha sido presentada por todos los grupos políticos en el Parlamento Regional. Uh, thank you, Mr. Fernandez Vara. Uh, I'm delighted that the uh, Vice President uh, Suiza is uh, still with us, and perhaps before she uh, leaves the parts for another engagement, maybe just a final uh, intervention from the Vice President. Uh, Vice President uh, Suiza, you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you very much. I want to thank you once again for this exchange today. And uh, I'm sure that nobody knows, nobody can know better the situation on the ground, but you who are a members of committee of the regions and though you who are elected at local and regional level. So I think uh, uh, you know uh, the situation better than any of us. Uh, we are aware of demographic challenges. Uh, this is uh, at, at least uh, at last part of my portfolio. And we are aware that demographic challenges are high in rural areas. And this, this situation can't be changed without the empowerment of rural areas, which are, which are huge potential for our Europe. So we, uh, uh, we will look very carefully into all your recommendations. Uh, but uh, let me underline that this vision will be successful only if we work on it together uh, for the benefit of rural areas. Uh, uh, we know that we are only at the beginning of the road to prosperous, sustainable, connected and attractive rural areas. Uh, as I said, if we join forces, we can uh, make a lot. So I was uh, listening very carefully. Whatever you said is true on connectivity, on digital connectivity, on uh, affordable housing, on, uh, of course, decent work. Uh, uh, whatever uh, use climate change, whatever you said is, uh, is something which we are dealing with on, uh, on this level of the Commission. But we are ready to work with you together. And this is especially important, uh, as I said, for my portfolio, both in democracy and demography. And thank you for mentioning Conference on the Future of Europe, because we want also to see uh, your input in Conference on the Future of Europe. And if you upload uh, this on multilingual digital platform, this will be helpful. And you can see uh, the results in our conclusions. I want to thank the rapporteur, Mr. Mr. Moreno Borilla. I want to thank all of you who participated in uh, making this this report uh, happen and uh, I want to, uh, ass uh, to assure you that we will uh, very carefully uh, take your recommendations into uh, consideration and uh, we echo the need 
and the concerns of rural areas also through the conference on the future of Europe, as I already said. said I'm really sorry, uh, I wouldn't be able to stay longer with you, but uh, I will be following and my team and my collaborators will be following uh, this uh, meeting until the very end. Thank you very much and all the best. And Commissioner, uh, Vice President, uh, I know our President uh, Apostolos uh, Zizikastos has just joined us and I think he'd just like to have maybe just a quick word and in particular in the context of Marseille and uh, I'll maybe uh, if uh, our President could connect. Uh, can we give the microphone to President uh, Zizi Costas, please? Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Michael. Uh, I wanted to thank uh, Vice President Suica for uh, being here with us today in this very interesting debate. I think that the issues that we are discussing are not only interesting uh, to us, but I would say mostly interesting for the citizens of the European Union. And I'm really looking forward, uh, Vice President Suica, not only to this discussion that we're going to have uh, in Marseille in March, in our summit of uh, regions and cities, where you will be uh, a, a big part of it, of course, but also I'm also looking uh, really uh, into how we are going to develop these proposals vis-a-vis -vis the Conference on the Future of Europe, in which, thanks to you, and I want to underline this because you have been a great ally of the regions and cities and of the Committee of Regions, uh, uh, the European Committee of Regions. Thanks to you, we have a very, very strong team of 30 members uh, from regional and local level who are representing us uh, in, this, uh, in this very interesting discussion. So thank you again very much uh, for your great help. 